Connecticut is home to many legends, myths, and hauntings. One of them being the melon heads. This thing was coming up from behind us. He could see around the tree, past me. I couldn't turn around, but I could hear his breathing. It was almost like it was excited that it was terrifying me. I started shaking. Fear was the only thing that helped me get free. Mutant melon heads hiding out in America's backwoods like an island of misfit toys. These small but monstrous humanoids allegedly prey upon people who wander into their territory. If I see something in the dark, see something move in the shadows, or just see something that resembles its shape, it brings it all back. Unfortunately, it lives with you forever. If you've never heard of them, I'll explain. Melonheads are said to be small, spindly, little humanoids with a head that has been referred to as melon looking. But it's not about how they look, but more about what they are capable of and do. It's said that these so-called creatures most often target teenagers and reside in rural areas in Connecticut, where it's said they live a feral lifestyle. These creatures feed off small animals, including stray cats, even human flesh when given the chance. Now it's said there's one of two things that happen to the humans they catch. They're either eaten or turned into one of them. What makes these creatures even more terrifying is many have said that they're able to communicate telepathically, causing many to wonder if they have that ability, what else can they do that we don't know about? There's several towns in Connecticut that are said to have roads that pass through these creatures' territory. But Velvet Street, located in the village of Stepney in Monroe, Connecticut, is the most famous of them all. Velvet Street also has another name to the locals, Dracula Drive. Due to the strange occurrences that happen on the road, like cars shutting off for no reason, strange ghostly figures seen on the side of the road, and unexplainable noises that echo through the trees. Dracula Drive has gained the reputation as the most haunted street in Connecticut. Now you're probably wondering where these creatures even came from. Well, people believe in three different stories. Some believe they were created by New England's Puritan past dating back to as far as the 1600s. It's said that a family near the Stepney village was accused of doing witchcraft by the locals. The family was then banished to the area's wilderness, forcing them to survive off wild animals, causing them to mutate over generations. The other story is they were escapees from a nearby mental asylum that operated from the 1860s to the 1960s, until the asylum burned to the ground, mysteriously causing every staff member and most of the patients to pass away. But it's said that there was a few that were never accounted for. Many of the locals believed they may have escaped into the nearby woods and began to mutate over time. Last is the most frightening of them all. Some wonder if these creatures that lurked the woods and the back roads were conjured up and created due to the result of witchcraft. Now there has been a few encounters to surface about these creatures. The most well-known happened Back in the 1980s, a group of all-American high school girls decided to go out joyriding after a Friday night football game, looking for harmless fun. They got into one of the girls' blue Granada and set off into the dark night. After driving around for a while, they decided to go someplace spooky, the very haunted Velvet Street, AKA Dracula Drive. Now the girls have heard about the legend of the monstrous melon heads living in those woods. So they decided, why not try and find them? The girls drove down Dracula Drive and parked the car. They left the headlights on and climbed out of the vehicle. The woods were very still and very, very dark. Other than the headlights, there was no other lighting, no street lights, and no houses. The girls 
were alone in the nighttime woods. Laughing with nervous energy, they started to walk down the road, fearfully hoping to see the monsters who supposedly lurked in those woods. After walking a couple hundred feet down the road, they heard the car door open and slam behind them. The engine started and the car was coming towards them. The girls jumped in the woods to avoid the car that was heading towards them. As the car drove by, they caught a glimpse of the figures inside. They were the size of children with disproportionately large heads and were dressed in tattered, dirty rags. Their eyes glue with orange light. And as they drove by, they let out an eerie laugh. All that was left for the girls to see were the taillights disappearing into the night. It seems the girls out looking for a scare got exactly what they were looking for. Now, just when you thought the story of the melon heads was done, it's far from it. Connecticut is not the only place to have said to have melon heads lurking in the woods. It's said that Ohio also has the same unexplained experiences along with Michigan. There's two theories that the locals of Ohio believe, and both of them have to do with a man named Dr. Crow, who was a mad scientist who used to take orphans in, but not with good reason. The doctor used to conduct experimental procedures on them until they got tired of being used as an experiment. So the orphans decided to burn the house down with the mad scientist doctor in the house. Realizing they had nowhere to go, they took to the woods. The second theory locals believe is that the government had been experimenting on the orphans, which was the reason of their large heads. They were then brought to Ohio to Dr. Crow's house in the middle of the night, and he and his wife took them in. The doctor then died of natural causes, and his house burned down. It was at that time the kids took to the woods. It's said that the name had come from the locals of the area because of their swollen heads. Now, as far as Michigan, they believe the melon heads live in underground tunnels, and every once in a while, they come out to feast. Where they believe they came from was an asylum near the Felt Mansion, and there was a doctor at the asylum who conducted experiments on the children there. Causing the children to turn on the doctor, many believe they began to eat him, causing him to perish. They then ran off into the woods where they're said to still be lurking till this day. But the origin of this legend may have a much less terrifying history. The Felt Mansion was once used as a Catholic school and that caused some tension. The local town folk referred to them as melon heads because they were considered smarter. It was a negative, obviously. Uh, they thought that they came from money and that they were rich and they had big heads because they were so smart. So there you have it, the legend of the melon heads. But I'll let you decide what to believe in. Let me know down below in the comments.